All right. Hey, everyone. Teller and Deb call January 3rd. Welcome to the future. We're here. Um, thanks. Thanks, everyone, for sticking around. <laughs> it's It's been good. So, yeah, I mean, we're, we're kicking it off. We're, we're doing some fun things. So um, I guess this week for me, um, I'm going to actually read your year in review article that you guys posted. <laughs> I think that would be a good start. And then um, I'm actually, so the Euler protocol, um, if you guys saw, I did a deep dive with them. They told us to go do a proposal uh, to be one of their oracles. So they have like, you can make a, you can make like a, there's sort of like compound type um, lending protocol. I know I'm oversimplifying it, but <laughs> um, you can like choose your own Oracle basically in the deployments. So they like automatically pick one from the front ends, but it's, it's more of like a choose your own Oracle adventure. And basically they're just using like Uniswap for a lot of the lower liquid and anything that doesn't have a chain link pool. And, you know, for those of you that don't know, Uniswap V3 um, is a really, really bad Oracle to use in proof of stake land. It's very easily manipulated. So we can go over there, give those, some of those guys another option should be fun. So I'm going to do that this week. Um, and then, yeah, I'll just talk to you guys about what you're doing. Owen, how's things going? Going well. Um, I reviewed a couple of PRs, um, less some feedback for Akrams on reducing the number of API calls for certain prices. Um, yeah, let me know if you have questions about that. I also need to update the docs for the Docker release process um, and then fix this install bug that I encountered with the latest release. I just need to make sure it is something and then fix it before our next little work group thing on Thursday. Cool. Yeah, for, for those of you guys that haven't noticed, um... We, we've been doing a lot of over the past week and then we're going to be doing it more this week. We're just doing like overhaul review of the documentation. Um, so whether it's on Telliad, whether it's on doing Solidity, whether it's on just any of our user tools, we're making sure that they are kind of up to par and just sort of leading the space as far as this is easy to use. If you want to come in here and use our software, um, you won't have, you won't be begging us to just walk you through it and hold your hand. You, you can actually figure it out. We'd be happy to hold your hand, but um, you can also just go to the docs and it works, which is kind of important. So yeah, thanks Owen. Um, cool, Tally. Hey, uh, I sent off the um, dyad imp uh, liquidity implementation. So you guys can take a look at that. Well, you didn't uh, send it off you it's in our internally yes it's um yeah so tim if you want to take a look at that um did you write any tests for it uh, i didn't but uh, i tested it with their test and all the tests pass okay make sure you write like a specific tellery test okay um, but yeah cool and Cause, uh oh cool. yeah no, because I, you know, make sure that the playground and stuff is in their tests and they're, you know, pulling properly and making sure that the require statements are tested. Just the standard teller tests we do on most functions. So anyway, continue. Oh, yeah. Um, just also in discussion with Mimicry about um, uh, how they want to move forward. Um because they have an API that um, hosts their algorithm, their Tammy algorithm. Um, so we may just plug that into Telliot, or um, I may keep working on it today. If you think that's a good idea to like correct my Python version, because I think ideally we want to like replicate it in Python because it doesn't rely on their API. Yep. Yeah, no, I mean, we, we don't want to do an API reliance. Like that's... Yep. Just, it, it should work, they, they they should, you know. So if they want to move forward, you know, and just starting to test, which, which I think they're doing already, they, you can just use a centralized Oracle, but that's, yeah. 
ideally if there's a way and it seems like there is a way to to not rely on that let's make sure we do it okay cool um yeah and then i have to look at your data specs pull request on the chat gpt thing but i'll get to that uh, i'll do that today oh yeah i also um you had some feedback on the query type form so i'm gonna add the like yep the change the change them to optionals and then add ask a question cool yeah all right uh akram um work, working on the uh Adena stuff the teleflex uh set up an environment for devnet deployment uh, that deploys the contracts uh interact with it deposit stake and so forth um I had instructions, but I'm gonna try it out on a, like a droplet and then merge it to the main. And then after that, I'm gonna work on the Telliot stuff that uh, Owen was talking about. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, let us know whenever that's like up and deployed. You know, we'd love to get people poking around at it and telling them to go poke around at it and break it. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I guess we will, let's talk about that when whenever you get a chance. Okay, sure. Um, Tim. Uh, so yeah, I did review Tally's dyad integration and um, it, it makes sense to me, like the way it's put together right now. Luckily, a lot of the work is done already by Liquidy. Yep. Um, but yeah, I agree that there does need to be a test that makes sure they can get our data um, which would kind of reflect the same testing we do did in like Teller 360 yeah. for liquidity. Um, but but yeah, I can sign off on at least the implementation so far. Um, cool. And then I've got I posted last week internally uh, the um, packed the Kadena audit document, um, and I was hoping I could meet with you, Akram just like really short, like 10 minutes to go over that and figure out if there's any more pack specific features that should be talked about, um, in the spec doc, um, to fill that in. And then, and then also I was going to continue on the tipping bot. Um, I didn't get to do that on Friday last week. Yep. Um, but that's for mimicry, and I guess that integration should be coming along pretty soon here, live. Awesome. Um, yeah, and Ryan. Um, pushed out the new and improved voting page. If you guys haven't checked that out already, it now enables you to enter a dispute ID, vote yes or no. Um, uh, I'm going to push out, I'm going to review some final edits for the uh, fun to feed walkthrough video and then push that out. It's another uh, teller school content to add to the arsenal. Uh, and then I want to essentially start brainstorming for the next. I think we discussed some more um, uh, adding parts to the sample using teller walkthrough. So I know we were going to do like a medium article on using Teller or something like that too. Um, you know, or, or some article walkthroughs we, we were talking yeah. about, we were sort of missing in some of our documentation, just sort of the longer form, you know, like how to. So instead I, I of video, I think that would be better. Once that either a video or um, I think like a medium article with the commands laid out, like, especially, you know, the one that we were, had specifically mentioned, like if you're a non-solidity developer coming in. It's like right from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it, cause our docs sort of assume. Yeah. 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 A, a, at least a little bit of working knowledge of, as far as hard hat and solidity projects go. So like if you're coming from the base, you know, maybe having a resource to point like confused at where you are, <laughs> like yeah. click here. Um, and then something like that I, I know could be helpful. No, that's a great, I, I think that would be great for me too, because. Yeah, we should keep a running list of non-documentation content, whether it's video or a blog post, I think we could decide later, but 
just areas of the user workflow where where some additional supplementary content would be useful and just keep a, a list of what what those specific points are in the process and then we can kind of we could brainstorm on content creation after that sounds good i don't know where you want to keep that list i don't know maybe we can make a a trello list really quickly um yeah, when we jump into the, we can talk about it when we jump into the user flow thing today, the work group. Cool, it's funny. Yeah, on that note, I'm going to be working on the long form explanation of how to be a telereporter, which well, not really how to be a telereporter, how to install and run Teleit for people who don't haven't done like a lot of Python dev work. Like it'll just have commands that you put in. Uh, yeah, at the end, of, I'm just doing a lot of telly uh, reporting, testing, tipping. You need to claim some tips. Um, the node's working. All right. We're up and running. Um, I think today we're going to, Brenda and I, Maybe today, Brenda. I don't know. We're gonna deploy um, Gnosis Chain, so then you'll be able to report on actual Gnosis Chain. So we can do it this morning, just because the workbook, guys. I forgot to send this last uh, week, but today and tomorrow it's the users work group from one to three, and then on Thursday and Friday we will pick up again with Telliot, um, unless unless uh, Owen thinks we should push it further. But that's basically the plan. Cool. So Nick, I guess I'm available all morning until one. So. Cool. Um, yeah, that sounds fun. Mike, anything else? All right. I'm just going up on the floor here with some sick kids until the um, Megan will be home at, at at noon. So then I'll be much more available. So if I'm quiet over the next couple hours, that's why. Cool. Um, but yeah, I mentioned to you guys in the founders chat that uh, StarkNet wants to have a couple calls with us to move forward with um, us coming on board. Um, the TLDR about that is we've been talking with StarkNet about coming over and just getting some some support from them. Uh, it's a you could probably talk more about it, Nick, if it's necessary. But it's not as easy as porting over to uh, like another EVM. But really cool project, a bunch of smart guys over there, and um, and they like us, and so we're beginning. Uh, we're going to begin that process over the next week or so. Yeah, um, he wants to write yeah. some Cairo. Yeah, it's actually closer to. Um, it's not as bad as Pact. Like it's it's. I, I think it's more understandable <laughs> than Pact. Not that I mean, Pact is bad. Pact is it's not bad. It's just it's very different. Very yes. different, yeah. and Cairo is more. It's closer to what we're like used to. Closer so, to yeah. yeah, yeah. Still, um, but yeah, we can. And then, uh, yeah, I'm gonna send Owen. Last week, he asked, "Are there any good resources on the current state of zero knowledge tech?" Tech. I think you predicted it because the very next day, Epicenter dropped an episode the current state of zero knowledge technology. Wow. <laughs> so I'll send that to you guys. Uh, so if you go look at Epicenter, it's they have on Anna Rose and um, I, I forget his name, I won't butcher it, but um, yeah, and, and they talk about it. So it's it's really good. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, questions, Ryan, anything? Uh, yeah, so we had some good ones in the uh, deep questions channel that I thought might be worth re rehashing for the Teller Dev Call crew. Um, Tom Bombadillo asked, I have a question about accuracy. Could bad actors commit acts of bleepery by consistently reporting values that are slightly high slash low, but not high low enough that anyone would be willing to risk their stake on a dispute? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so I, I answered this one for him. And I said, hell yeah, they could. Um, so, you know, this would be like an example of where you could do this would be like an ample fourth where you, you could arb a difference. Like if you, you know, reported the price 
half a percent lower than it actually was, you could actually make some money on the protocol if, if you could throw the value and you knew it was throwing it. Um, would we dispute half a percent? Probably not. Um, but what we would probably notice, and you know, we we do monitor these things, is like for Ampleforth, especially, like you would notice they would probably contact us and be like, hey, your report always seems to be the lowest, or you know, usually we report with Chainlink and their centralized one. So like it seems that you guys are always coming in half a percent lower. What's up? And um, you know, we would look at our code, like we've actually had it happen in the past, and usually it's like oh, most of our reporters aren't pulling from this specific exchange. We, we need to add in some more exchanges. And usually we just talk to them and they're like, oh, cool, we'll add in this new exchange that lists it and that number corrects it. But if it was malicious, what we would probably do is just yell in the Discord and say like, hey, be sure to update your code with the most recent exchanges and this formula. We're going to start disputing, you know, yeah. if you're half a percent lower. And then... I, and I think it's always... There's some responsibility on the user right. to be to like take ownership of like if that value is wrong, you you can dispute it and make a case as for why you disputed it. Sure. And then you know there'll be there's a voting process to slash the reporter. Yeah, because you know, you obviously need to detect it first, which I think would be the harder part. Yeah. Um, but like, you know, most of the time, like a lot of times it has happened in the past where like we're a little bit under or a little bit over and it just has to go with like telling the reporters what actual methodology you want used yeah because you know depending on which exchanges you want in you know given price feed or you know how you're sort of calculating it just knowing and, and passing along that information can, can usually fix it so anyway continue great question um sorry so i'm gonna say something no, just a great question. Oh, um, and then there was uh, some some good discussion about your uh, tweet thread, specifically part okay. seven of seven. I don't know if you want to elaborate on it, but you essentially said oracles will turn into infrastructure slash public goods with a focus on reporting unique data sources, less focus on dispute resolution slash truth. That will be handled by individual projects. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I think so. So I had done this article. Hopefully, you guys go look at it. Um, you can probably link into some of the discussions. But one of the the ideas of Oracle becoming infrastructure kind kind of goes back to that last question. You know, like you could actually have a scenario where like that that half percent, like they they could ample forth, for instance, could have their own methodology for what price they want, and then we we could have ours, and like we might not slash a person for for that but they might not allow that value into their system. And they they could be two separate pieces. You know, like we could still be putting in working on getting it resolved and then they could, their token holders could say, well, we're still not gonna use that value from Teller. Or, you know, they might want to own some sort of slashing. Another, another piece that I thought would be, you know, like one of the things that people are, I think are going to do in the future is require more staking. So. To tell her the decent threshold for security, but especially on some of the lower chains, if you know the reason that you lower chains as far as cheaper chains, some of the reasons you use really cheap chains is that they're really cheap and really fast. If you want to be sub five seconds, sub ten seconds with the teller system, it's it's relatively cheap to break. Um, you know, it's it's it still costs money, but you know if you want to secure a hundred million dollars on something that's five seconds long, like tellers, tellers just not it. Um, not, and there's no decentralized oracles that are it. It's, it's not our fault. Um, but one thing that you could do is you could say like, hey, in addition to being staked with teller, you also have to be staked on our protocol. You have to come and you have to stake $20 million worth of our tokens to be a reporter. And then if you do that, now all of a sudden, now you can report really, really quickly. Um, and, and it can work because you got $20 million stake. So I could see some systems starting to work more like that. So we'll see, but yeah. Uh, yeah, cause I, I don't know if, you know, the reason that we sort of had moved away from being, we, we've moved away from being a DAO in a lot of ways, we don't really like relying on voting. Um, getting people to vote is hard. You know, we don't have a whole lot of disputes in our system and. Um, 
the, the people who handle those disputes should be the project itself um, in a lot of cases. You want, you want sort of an ex, a lot of times you don't want the project itself, like especially if like the project itself is like five guys hold all the tokens. Yeah, just rely on Teller. That's probably a better bet. But you know, like if, if you actually have a decentralized DAO in your own holder and, and you have some sort of some nuances in what is of good or bad value, it might make sense to to add in your own say. So I don't know if that makes sense. Great question. Cool. Yeah. So all right. Anything else? I think that's it. All right. Well, yeah, guys. Um next week I think we'll do 2023 roadmap. Uh so the tech roadmap. It is. So we'll whiteboard that out. It'll be fun. So be sure yeah. to tune in. So thanks everyone. See you.